I'm a 3D artist, and in this video, I turn Minecraft mobs into overpowered boss versions and even show them to a real mod developer to get his reaction. For my first boss, I wanted to start by upgrading the skeleton. He's just a scrawny little... Ugh, gross. Now I don't want to drift too far from Minecraft style, so I decided to keep the boss pretty simple this time around. I started with a 5-piece spine, physical rib cubes that can move around independently, 16-piece cape with shoulder pads that blows in the wind realistically, and to top it all off, I made a perfectly realistic hand out of tiny voxels. Okay, fine, lose the hands. Now a lazy person might just paint over this with a bone texture and call it good. Me, on the other hand, I call it great. Uh, I guess it could use some eyes. My idea for this boss is the Skeleton King. He's an ancient monarch that uses magic or something. I'm basing this loosely on King Charles, so it's a little rough around the edges at the moment. Minecraft loves to make things interconnected, you know, really make you think about them beyond the surface level. You see these two mobs with the big nose, you think, oh, Squidward is the father. So I decided to make the cape out of sniffer fur. Maybe the skeletons hunt them for some reason. I don't know. I just, I think it gives some depth to a mob that serves absolutely no purpose whatsoever. Finally, I put gold chains and jewels everywhere and man, I'm getting sued like real big time. Now this wouldn't be a Minecraft boss without some kind of attack or weapon of some kind. So I made him this gold scepter with a floating cube on top, kind of like the dungeons guy. What a crazy physique, by the way. This guy's built like a hammer. Why don't we add a tiny bit of glow to the scepter? Just a little bit. Ultimately, this guy's looking pretty good already, but is it enough? Absolutely not. I'd like to draw your attention to the skeleton horse. Basically, whenever lightning strikes, there's a small chance to spawn a bunch of these skeleton horsemen riding what? Skeleton horses. You see where I'm going with this? This hurts me more than it hurts you, Charles. So the sniffer is really fat, and I don't know how these legs even have joints, so I decided to uh, modify the anatomy a bit. There are some references out there, but they're uh, less than helpful, so I'm gonna have to think critically here. First of all, there's no way that's all ribs. Let's get that out of the way up front. I mean, if you think realistically, that's not... I think I just made a caterpillar. Imagine he runs at like Mach 10 without the fur weighing him down anymore. I ended up raising the legs so he has, you know, joints, and I even put these spikes on the top to explain the height difference. Now, I love how this turned out, but does the Skeleton King fit on the first try? He does. He does fit on the first try. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I think it turned out great. The Sniffer's built like a tank. Kind of reminds me of World of Tanks. They're the sponsor of today's video. It's this really fun, free game where, I mean, the name pretty much says it all. You're in a world with tanks. And there's this heavy focus on realism, really immerses you in the experience. When you find yourself doing trigonometry to figure out whether your tank should be dancing or not, <laughs> you know you're playing a good game, okay? It's available on PC and console, and there's over 600 tanks to choose from. And the armor mechanics are realistic down to every individual plate. As a 3D artist, this is the stuff that gives me nightmares. There's this tech tree where you can build out and research all the different parts so you can go based on stats or just find whichever one looks the funniest. No one's gonna stop you. Try World of Tanks today. It's completely free and if you use my link below to register you can get a tier 6 tank for free and a bunch of other free stuff. But that's enough of that. Let's get back to the video. For my next boss I threw this spider on the floor and decided to give it this massive voluptuous leg. Just one apparently. I just imagine it hopping around like a pogo stick. Look the original spider model is all right I guess. It's basically I at this point, but I definitely wouldn't call it scary. I mean, just look at spiders from other games. I think I hear a spider. In a weird way, this is actually still scarier. So my plan for this boss is a very big, very pregnant spider found in the nether who shoots babies at you and uh, this is going off the rails. Look, you ever see those videos where they kill a spider and a hundred more start running around like an iPad kid in a restaurant? That's kind of what I'm going for here. I started retexturing the base model using various nether textures. Some of them look pretty good and uh, the others, behold, the Spigland. <laughs> my designs usually turn out scary regardless, so I'm kind of concerned what will happen now that I'm actually trying to do that. I ended up changing it to Blackstone and started drawing these lava runes all over it. I even gave him this mask made of netherite, but I it's, it's so weird, I forgot what it's for. Does anybody know what the point of the mask is? <laughs> yeah, it looks all right, but I think it could use some, what's it called, additional joint surgery. So much better, wasn't it worth it? Oh no, what are you gonna do, chase me? Your legs are broken. Whenever Minecraft makes a baby creature, they usually just kind of scale the original model down, which I'm lazy, but not that kind of lazy. I'm thinking the longer this spider stays alive, the abdomen keeps growing larger, and then when you kill it, a ton of these spiderlings come out and start running all over the place. And to make it worse, about one in five of them are these lava spiderlings I made that set you on fire if you touch them, just to make it that much more annoying. You know, for being a scary boss, this sure is the most adorable thing I've ever made. 
And it's at this point that I ran into a problem. Most of my bosses are detailed, massive, hulking beasts, and this is not living up to it. I wasn't gonna scare anybody with this thing. So with that, it was time to start working on the big mama. I started throwing cubes down into a spider shape. If you look closely, you'll notice it's a... Uh very slightly scaled up compared to the original. This thing has everything. Teeth, multi-part legs. I, you know what? The eyeballs can be cubes too. Who's gonna stop me? This back here is the uh, spider spawner. Legally, I cannot elaborate. Oh no, what if it was like really hairy too? Just, uh... Ugh, yeah, that's awful. If you do manage to defeat it, Big Bertha here will drop a bunch of scorch webs. They're like normal cobwebs, but one, they set entities on fire. Two, they don't destroy items, so it would be really useful for farms. Comparing the original spider to the boss version, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Come on, that's a happy family if I've ever seen one, okay? I think it'd be cool if there were more of these things with different types, but at this point, my time had run out since it was finally time for the mod developer to judge my work. I'm a 3D artist. Dude, I love this immediately. My brain goes to Adventure Time for some reason. This is a really fun design. I love that the jaw is ever so slightly offset. It looks very natural. I love that all the ribs are like chunky 3D models. They're not just flat textures. I love that he's got like the little metals hanging off of his ribs. It looks like he was a distinguished king. But I love the sniffer leather. Just all of it just feels very intimidating. I like it. The way that you did the spines coming out of the rib cage on the sniffer. It just looks really satisfying. It looks like I would see this in a museum. The weakest part for me is probably the design of the staff. The orb on top doesn't feel magical enough. I don't know, it needs more pizzazz, more oomph. I don't want to blow it out the gate saying 10 out of 10, but I mean, I'm enjoying this a lot. I think it would be very popular. I'm going to have to give this one a 9 out of 10. So some things I like about this, because, uh, boy, there are a lot of things I don't like. <laughs> I love the design where they are like Russian nesting dolls, where each one is a little smaller than the previous. I really, really like the boss design on this one. I love the 3D eyes. I love that they're tilted just a little bit. I love the fangs, how they have just a little bit of curve to them. I love that all the legs are hairy. I mean, I, I hate all of these things, but it's fantastically done. Some things I don't like, spiders. I mean, automatically I'm docking you points just because I cannot in good conscience rate spiders a 10 out of 10. I just can't, man. I hate them. I am so uncomfortable looking at the boss of this thing. It's not even funny. Other than that, I don't really have any criticism of these models. The only, I guess, maybe criticism is that the legs on the medium one look a little too thick, but they match with the vanilla spider, so it feels okay. Objectively, I gotta give this one a 9.5 out of 10. It's so well executed that it makes me feel gross. I just released my latest game, Pocket Pusher. It is a free-to-play coin pusher simulator. It is currently in early access on Steam and it's completely free. With that, I got the best scores I've ever gotten from the mod developer, but as I always say, this isn't over till it's tens every single time. See ya.